So welcome everyone. Welcome for the first SymphonyCon uh, here in Warsaw. Um, I'm very, very excited to be here with you today. Uh, so many people from the Symphony community coming from everywhere in Europe. Um, and, and as Greg said uh, before, for the first time ever, we are sold out. So that's very great news for, uh, for Symphony and for the Symphony community. Um, so thank you for coming. That's the first thing I wanted to say. The second one is, um, I think that we, as the, the, the Symphony community, um, we are at a turning point, really, in our uh, life. Um, and today I want to talk about where we are now, uh, what we did uh, right, actually, and how the ecosystem works nowadays, and how we can work to actually improve things uh, in the next couple of years. OK, so uh, and, and that, that's something I like to do, uh, not at every single conference, but uh, at least once a year, is to give some numbers about uh, the community um, and about Symphony, actually. So at the end of June this year, um, Twig was, was the first package on packages to reach the one million downloads um, number. Um, um, and, and I think that's, that's, that's huge. That's really interesting. Um, <coughs> in about a year, because, uh, you know, uh, packages.com was actually um, uh, put online about in, in April uh, 2012. So in June, it means that we had one million downloads on packages in uh, a year. Uh, as of today, we are talking about 1.9 million downloads, um, um, which means that we are going to reach two million downloads um, um, by the end of the year, uh, which also means that the, the second million of downloads uh, will be done in less than six months, which means that the growth is uh, uh, really outstanding. So, and, and of course, in June, a lot of different packages, uh, packages uh, actually reached this one million download uh, milestone. Um, if we have a look at um, Swift Mailer, we are talking about 1.7 million downloads. And if we have a look at Symfony, the full stack framework, and all the Symfony components, um, all the, the libraries um, I'm actually working on, so Silex and Twig, um, we are talking about 22 millions, a million downloads um, in the last 18 months. That's really a huge number. Um, um, I'm not really sure what it means, really. Uh, probably that a lot of people actually are using Symfony on a day-to-day -day basis, which is really cool. Um, <clears throat> and it's not just about the Symfony full stack framework. I'm really talking about all the components. And if you have a look at all the components, you can see that all those components, uh, they enjoy more than half a million downloads in the last 18 months. And more than a million downloads for the console and the event dispatcher, which is really huge. Uh, that's also because um, Symfony is not only a framework that you can use, not only components that you can use to build your own proprietary software. It's also about other open source software that are actually using some of the Symfony components. And we had quite a few open source software, big ones, small ones, uh, a lot of them really using some of the, syn of the Symfony components. Um, and one thing that is quite interesting, I'm not talking about software that were actually built on top of Symfony. I'm talking about libraries and applications that actually at some point they decided to drop uh, to get rid of some of their code to replace um, that code with some of the components that we actually built over the years. So that's what I call the one component strategy. Um, um, and I think that that's great. So at some point, I, I thought that, you know, all those components, all those open source software using Symfony, they deserve more exposure on the symfony.com website. That's why um, we launched the, the Symfony family uh, section on the symfony.com website. Um, so this is a new, uh, a new section on the website that we actually published, uh, I think, um, three, or, uh, three weeks ago or a month ago, something like that. Um, and if you go to symfony.com slash components, you will see that you have the list of all the components, so that's not very new. But then all the components are actually clickable, and you can um, go to a dedicated page for 
every single component where you can have a small description of what the component actually does, a link to the code, to the documentation, and then we list all the, 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 the software, uh, the libraries, and the applications that are, are actually using the component. Um, you can also go to uh, the new projects page where we list all the projects actually using Symfony uh, with, with uh, a link to all the components that are actually embedded into those projects. And for every single project that is actually listed on the website, you can also get a page with more information about what they are using and, and what the project is about. As of today, we are talking about Forceplus project um, on, on, on Symfony.com. And the good news is that this section of the website, like many other ones, are actually um, free to uh, be updated by anyone. So if you want to add your own project, if you are using some of the Symfony components and you are actually um, um, writing uh, an open source project, you can go to GitHub, Symfony slash Symfony dash marketing, um, the repository, and then you can submit your own project if you want. OK, so talking about the Symfony.com website, um, <coughs> We did some nice improvements uh, in the last few months, and I want to talk about some of them because I think that everyone should know about them. They are quite interesting. So the first one is that you can really hack the Symfony.com website if, if you want. You can translate the website into your own language if you want. Um, that's not that difficult to, 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 to actually do because we don't have that many pages with uh, contents. Uh, the good news is that this, uh, this contents actually doesn't change that often, so if you actually translate the website today, um, it will uh, still be relevant in, in a few months or, or years, actually. So, and again, you can go to the Symfony slash Symfony dash marketing um, repository on GitHub. You can fork the, um, uh, you can at least, uh, you can also just uh, go to the GitHub website and do everything from there. You don't need to fork um, um, uh, the repository. You can edit the pages. You can create new ones. You can translate the, everything from there. Um, at some point, of course, you have some typos. You have some errors um, in, uh, on the website. And, and we wanted uh, to improve the workflow um, when it comes to contributing fixes, typos, um, and stuff like that. So. We, we add a, a link on the left side of the screen uh, on every single documentation page. Um, but at some point, we realized that people uh, just missed this link. So we created this big blue button, edit this page on every single page uh, on symphony.com. So if you want to fix a typo, if you want to contribute something, you can just click the edit this page button, and then you you will be redirected to the right repository on GitHub, and you will be able to actually change anything you need, you want, and, and, and actually submit a proposal to um, improve the documentation. So it works for the documentation, um, all translations of the documentation, um, and all the marketing pages, actually. OK. Um, OK, this one is also really nice. This is the roadmap uh, page, uh, as you know. Uh, we have a very well-defined process when it comes to uh, Symfony uh, releases, which means that we have one release every six months, um, and every two years we have a long-term uh, support release, uh, which means that if you need to know when uh, any given version of, of Symfony is going to be released, you can go to the roadmap page, um, and uh, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, you can just enter uh, uh, any valid uh, 2.x version in the box, and then it's going to tell you um, when it, it's going to be released, um, uh, uh, if it is a, a long-term support release or not, and a, a lot of information about the release. So that's really nice. But I also wanted to talk about the first part of the screen here, and the thing is, um, I hope that you are actually uh, enjoying the symphony.com uh, blog and that you uh, subscribe to the um, RSS feed so that you have all the nice information about uh, new versions and uh, new releases um, when they um, come out. But if you can't, or if you think that at some point you might miss uh, an important information about uh, the roadmap, you can also subscribe to notifications, which means that whenever we release a new version of Symfony, a minor ones, minor ones or big ones, you will get an email. You can subscribe to all releases, or you can tell uh, that you want to only receive an email when there is actually a security fix release, which is really nice. 
Okay, and also, yeah, the first, the first checkbox is actually about um, big events happening in the Symphony world, uh, the, the Symphony release world, really, which means that when um, uh, uh, a, any given version is actually um, going to, um, um, uh, to be not maintained anymore, you can get an email ahead of time so that you can get the information and plan uh, the upgrade to the next release. So that's very nice. Um, I talked about uh, the processes that we have in the Symphony community and the fact that we have a very well-defined process uh, when it comes to uh, releasing um, uh, Symphony, and we try to enforce uh, this uh, schedule, and I think we have been doing that for the last year or so. Um, so it works pretty well. Um, also, the, the way we are actually handling the security uh, release process uh, with um, uh, security advisories, uh, CVU numbers, uh, private repositories where people can actually help us um, when it comes to um, fixing some security issues. Um, we also have uh, a nice process to uh, work with upstream projects using Symfony and some more. Um, and if you are following the Symfony.com blog, you are actually aware of all those things. But I'm pretty sure that you are not aware of everything actually, so I want to uh, talk about some of them today. So the first one is, and I think I, I've been doing that for the last six months perhaps, uh, all the releases I'm doing on Symfony or Twig or Silex or other libraries I'm actually uh, working on, uh, I sign, I PGP sign every single release. So if you go, uh, if you want to actually um, uh, get the signature for any tag, uh, for instance, for the Symphony 2.2.11 release, you can uh, run this command, git show, uh, show signature for this tag, and you will see that uh, you have a signature for every single tag. So that's how you can uh, actually check that I'm the one who actually released this version. Um, and you can also use this command uh, where you can see that it's actually me that did the release with my, my, my key. Um, Okay, so that, that's the first thing. And of course, along the years, I've developed um, some tools to ease my work, um, and um, I'm using them all day long, actually. Um, those tools are not that interesting per se because I'm the only one to actually use them, um, but they are interesting because uh, it lets you, it lets you uh, do nice things with the Symfony Git repository. So I want to talk about some of the things that you can do. Um, so I'm merging pull requests all the time, um, almost five a day, actually, on average. Um, and I'm not using the, the big green merge button on, on GitHub, never ever. Uh, first, because when I started to um, work on Symfony, uh, this button did not exist, so it was just not possible. So, uh, and also because I wanted to do more than just merging a pull request. Um, so I developed a specific tool to use my job, which means that whenever I want to merge uh, a pull request, this is the command I actually run, um, gh for GitHub, probably, um, and merge, and, and then the, the pull request number. That's my green button, actually. And, and everything is automated from, from there. Um, so, for instance, um, oh, and that, 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 that's new, uh, so I'm improving the tool all the time. Uh, and recently I added categorizations for uh, all pull requests. Uh, so when, before merging any pull request, it asked me for uh, the kind of pull request it's, it is actually. So, uh, is it a new feature? Is it a bug fix or is it a minor change? A minor change being uh, a typo, a PHP doc change, um, a documentation change, whatever. Things that do not have any impact uh, on the code. So uh, a test uh, fix, for instance, uh, goes to uh, the minor category. That's also um, how I can automatically uh, generate a change log for uh, a release. So I'm not doing a copy and paste anymore. Um, it, 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 it's done automatically now. And as you can see, every time I'm actually merging something, this is the merge commit message. So you have the category, feature, minor, bug. You have the pull request number so that when you are on GitHub, you can click on the number to get to uh, the pull request. 
you have uh, a small description, which is actually the message from uh, coming from uh, the pull request um, uh, on GitHub. And then I also add uh, the nickname of um, the contributor. So if you want to know who is actually doing the most, most of the work, you can have a look at all the contributors in the change logs. Um, so this is more or less uh, the command I'm using to generate the change log. It's not exactly the same, but almost. So you git log, uh, you only want the merges, uh, the merge commits. Um, you grab on bug something, and, and then you can uh, give it a range of uh, versions. So if you are on version X and you want to upgrade to the latest version, you can use this command to actually generate change log of everything that happened between your version and the version you want to upgrade to. That's really nice. Um, and if you have a closer look at a merge commit, uh, you can see a lot of interesting information in there. So first, what you can see is that uh, the merge commit uh, contains the discussion that happened in, uh, on GitHub. So you have um, the nice table, uh, contribution table here, so you can have a look at uh, what kind of BC breaks you, can, you get from uh, this new feature, if it is a new feature with a BC break, which should not happen anymore, actually. Uh, deprecations and, 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 and the, 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 the pull request for the documentation also, this is quite interesting. Um, and then you have this message uh, saying this pull request was merged into the master branch. Um, this is interesting because of the way we are actually merging pull requests into Symfony. Um, so as of today, we are maintaining three different branches in parallel, uh, 2.3, 2.4, and the uh, master branch, which is the upcoming 2.5 uh, version. And so when you want to fix a bug, you need to fix it in the oldest and still maintained branch. So as of today, we are talking about 2.3. Um, so, if you want to fix a bug, uh, then you need to fork uh, the Symfony repository and submit a pull request for the uh, 2.3 branch. And then, uh, on a regular basis, probably once a week or more, uh, I'm actually merging 2.3 into 2.4 and then 2.4 into 2.5. That way, we are always sure that all the bug fixes that happen in 2.3 are actually also in 2.4 and 2.5. We can't mess up, right? So that's worked really well for us. And of course, if you want to um, um, introduce a new feature, then you need to work on the master branch. We never ever add a feature into um, 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 stable branches, so we won't add any new feature in 2.3 or 2.4, even the smallest one really. We don't want to mess things up, so we uh, only add new features on the master branch. But of course, sometimes uh, it's not always that easy to uh, know if uh, what you are working on is actually a bug fix or a new feature. It's not very clear. So at some point you might um, submit a pull request on um, 2.3 because you think that this is a bug fix and actually this is more uh, a new feature so we need to merge that into the master branch instead of the 2.3 branch. So that's something I can do um, automatically so most of the time I don't bother the contributor with uh, the switching from one branch to the other one because it's not that easy to do with GitHub. You can't just change the branch. You need to cl close the pull request and then resubmit a new one for the right branch. So instead of doing that, if it works and if there is no um, um, uh, uh, problems, uh, I can just say, okay, merge this pull request but switch it to this branch, right? And the other way around also, which means that sometimes people fix um, bugs on the master branch, but they should have done that into the 2.3 branch. So I d just switch from the master branch to the 2.3 branch uh, uh, and be done with it. Also, uh, a lot of people are not really um, comfortable with Git and how to use it. Um, uh, and, and sometimes we ask people to squash all the commits to have a clean history, but they don't know how to do that. So instead of um, bothering the contributors too much, uh, I can do that for them. So I can just ask my tool to actually squash all the commits before uh, merging the pull request. Um, and I can you know, do both, so I can squash the commits and switch from one branch to uh, another one. Um, okay, and that's 
uh, why uh, this uh, message is actually very useful. I think I had, uh, ah, okay, okay, I, I just forgot to talk about this. So as you can see on the screen here, the, the message that you get uh, in the pull request um, merge commit uh, message is this pull request was submitted for the blah blah branch, but it was merged into the 2.2 branch instead. It means that the contributor actually submitted the pull request for this branch, but I decided to switch it to another branch. Uh, the same goes for uh, squashing and, and so on. And as of yesterday, actually, I improved the tool um, because instead of saying, okay, this pull request was merged into the master branch, which does not say anything useful uh, really because the master branch is a moving target, right? So as of today, this is 2.5, but in a year, it's going to be 2.7. So if you have a look at the history, you won't be able to know um, which master branch we were talking about, really. So as of yesterday, I improved the tool so that now it says that the pull request was actually merged into the 2.5-dev branch, which is the master branch as of today. Okay, um, and also I don't want to rely too much on GitHub uh, because, you know, Symfony is hosted on Git. Uh, GitHub is a very nice tool um, to actually um, uh, discuss things, but I don't want to, really, to rely on it too much. So, uh, like the commands on pull request, but they are very interesting, right? It's very interesting to understand how we come up with this pull request, how we come up with this feature, uh, the namings or whatever. So at some point you might want to actually understand why this feature uh, works the way it is. Uh, so it's it's kind of interesting to be able to have a look at the commands. This one is not really uh, that interesting anyway. Um, so instead of relying on GitHub for that, we are actually um, uh, storing all the commands from pull request into the Git repository itself. Uh, as a nice side effect, it also means that you can get all those information while you are offline. That's also possible. So if you want to do that, uh, this is how you can um, get all the notes from... So you w we are using Git notes if uh, you are aware of, of this uh, feature of, of Git. Um, so if you want to get all the notes for uh, the Symfony repository or any other repository, actually, you can uh, fetch this... Um, origin here, or you can add this line into your git, uh, dot git, uh, dot git slash config file uh, so that you can um, fetch all the nodes whenever you pull or fetch uh, the repository. And then if you have a look at, um, if you want to have a look at some commands, you can use this command, git log uh, minus one, meaning I just want one commit, and then show notes github commands. And as you can see, you have um, the description uh, from uh, the main commit message. And then afterwards, you have all uh, the messages uh, from coming from the GitHub uh, commands. Last but not least, um, you are aware that we have some sub-splits uh, for Symfony. So we have a Git repository, which is read-only for every single component. And sometimes, you know, some people are just using one Symfony component. So when they want to submit a bug fix or uh, talk about a new feature, uh, they don't necessarily understand that they need to do so on the main Symfony slash Symfony um, repository. So they submit a pull request on uh, the subtree split, which is read-only, so we, can, we can't really merge anything from there. So uh, this move command allows me to take a pull request, submit it on uh, a subtree split, and move it to the main Symfony repository. Again, um, you know, people are not always aware of uh, the way we are uh, working uh, with the Git repository, so I'm trying to make their life easier. I think that's better. Oh, this one is also really nice. Uh, it, it's quite new also. You know, you can uh, add some labels on, on issues um, on GitHub, uh, but it is very tedious to do so in the web interface. Uh, you need to click on every single ticket and then you need to select all uh, the tags that you want to add to the ticket. So instead of doing that, I have this command. Uh, it allows me to tag all the new issues uh, on, the, uh, um, um, on the repository, and it's, it's, it's really fast. Um, so it works um, this way, so it gets all the things, all the issues, the new issues from uh, GitHub uh, thanks to the API, and then I have the, the title of the uh, pull request, I have all the categories, all the labels, and then I have the completion, which means that I can label 
um, hundred um, of issues in a matter of minutes, really. It also works for pull requests. I'm not sure you're aware that you can also add labels on, on pull requests on GitHub. You can't do so uh, directly from the web interface, but you can use the API to do so. So I'm doing that also for all the pull requests, which means that as um, if you want to get everything related to one component, for instance, you can go to the issues um, tab on GitHub and you will have all the issues and all the pull requests related to uh, these components, which is really nice when you know you want to work on the console or the process component. You have everything related to the component at on, on one place, one page. Uh, and for pull request, if you want to get all the labels on uh, the pull request page, which is kind of nice, you can you can't actually. Um, you need to a uh, small JavaScript. Um, script actually so um, I've, I've uh, um, shared uh, mine on, 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 on a gist so you can go there there is a small JavaScript file that you can uh, add to your um, uh, browser and then from there you will have all the tags all the labels on the pull request page which is really nice so the thing is it helps me and other contributors to be more productive when we want to work on Symfony it's really important that we can filter what we want to work on, and that's a nice way to do so. <sighs> Oof, wow. Okay, this is a very interesting topic for me. Um, um, cutting standard madness, really. Um, I tweeted about that uh, a few weeks ago, um, and uh, there was a kind of a misunderstanding about what I want, uh, wanted to convey in my uh, tweet. But we are, we are wasting a lot of time just doing, sorry about that, stupid things, like fixing standards. It does not add anything useful to Symfony or any other library. I mean, it's nice to actually fix the coding standards, but you have better things to do, actually. And the same goes for typos, right? Um, I don't have any statistics, but I think that probably one third of all the pull requests that I'm actually merging every single day are about typos and conic standards. That's too much, really. Uh, so, you know, we have better things to do, and I think that we need to actually automate all the things. And that's what I did. I started to work on a new um, initiative a, a couple of days ago. It's named a U boat. Um, and um, the, the goal of this boat is to actually automate all the things. Fixing typos, fixing cutting standards. Uh, the tools are not perfect yet uh, because I started it a couple of days ago, but it works pretty well. And um, this is how it works. So you submit a pull request, and in about you know less than 10 seconds after that, you get a comment on your pull request, and it tells you uh, what you need to fix: uh, typos, common typos, and and cutting standard fixes, right? Um, and I wanted to keep it simple, which means that it, this is just a command that you get on the pull request. It's not a pull request on the pull request, you know, because I don't want people to actually merge um, this um, uh, diff into uh, their code. Uh, we, don't, we don't really need to credit a boat anyway. Um, so what, what you can do is just, you know, fix it by hand if you want, or you can just copy and paste the patch and, and apply it to your um, code. Um, so it, the, the, the tool does not uh, fix all problems, but we're going to improve the tool over time so that we can um, really lower the number of pull requests that are just about typos and, and, and cutting standards problem. So um, I'm going to activate the tool today, um, and I will see how it works. So all the things I'm talking about today is really about how we can improve the contribution on Symfony, uh, how we can lower the barrier of entry when it comes to contributing to Symfony, how we can help people um, get their job done uh, as fast as possible. Um, uh, and, but I think that's just the beginning, really. Um, there are so many things that we can actually improve um, and, and, and at some point, I can't do everything, and, and I have a lot of people here that are helping a lot. Um, uh, I want to thank them today. Uh, I, I'm going to uh, probably, um, uh, yeah, Luis, 
Luis is helping a lot uh, on the pull request. Yeah, you can stand up, please. He's doing an amazing job, really. Yeah. Um, but but he's, he's not the only one. Uh, there is stuff, of course. Um, uh, he's not here today. Jakub is probably here today. Jakub? Yes, thank you. He's also helping a lot. Um, a bunch of people, really. But at some point, uh, you know, there are so many things that you can do in a day um, that um, we decided, I decided to actually hire someone um, just for that. Um, you probably know him. He, he, he has been involved in the community for the last seven years, I think. Um, he, he writes a lot about Symfony uh, on his blog, um, about Symfony and the ecosystem, actually. Um, and I think you know him because uh, he's been writing the, a, a week of Symfony uh, blog post uh, for the last seven years or so, which is really incredible. Um, I think it started in 2007 uh, with this uh, blog post uh, series, really. Um, and um, I want to um, welcome him on stage, uh, and he's going to talk about the things that we think um, we need to do to actually improve all the things. So, Ravier. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Fabienne, and uh, good morning, everyone. Okay. <laughs> I know that uh, uh, lots of you have uh, uh, a lot of. I know that uh, lots of you have uh, a great amount of, 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 of ideas of, about how to improve Symfony, okay? But I'm sure that most of those ideas are related to code, technical things, and all kind of stuff, okay? And it's great. But we think that there are a lot, a lot of other things that we can do to improve Symfony. And I'm not talking about Symfony project, but the community, the ecosystem, and all of that, all of that okay? So we're going to talk very briefly about five random ideas that we have to, to improve Symfony, okay? The first one is really about improving the Symfony download experience. Most of you are advanced users, so I guess you're thinking that this is not really a big deal because it's really easy to download Symfony, okay? But what happens when, when you are new to Symfony, okay? You want to download the Symfony framework and you go to the download page and you find this. You find a page that shows a strange words, okay? Things that you don't know what what they, what, what, they, what do they mean, okay? About uh, uh, the standard edition, the distribution, the bundles, things that you don't know what do they mean, okay? And if you click on that list, on that list to, to select the version that, that you want to download, you find this, eight different versions and no clue about which one you should pick, okay? So we think it's hard for new users, okay? So we're going to redesign from scratch this page, okay? So soon you will only see two versions, okay? The latest long support version and the latest stable version, okay? And for each one of them, we're going to show by default the Compose installation. That will be the default installation method, okay? And we'll, we'll of course, offer the alternative as a zip file, okay? And that's all. No more complex words, no more eight versions to choose from, as easy as it should be, okay? And this is the download page, but we plan to do the same for each and every Symfony page. So we need your comments, your ideas to improve <coughs> each and every Symfony page, okay? The second idea is really about talking about closing and removing and reducing things, okay? Uh, we need to focus on the important things, okay? So there are some things like this old Symfony mailing list where we used, uh, a few years ago, we used to discuss about the Symfony development on, on this list, but this is no longer true, okay? The discussion nowadays is being held on GitHub. So we are going to officially close that list. So again, if you know things that, uh, that we could reduce, remove, please talk to us, tell that things, okay? Okay, the number three. Before talking about this, this idea, I want to ask you something, okay? So could you please raise your hand, those of you who frequently visit the Symfony blog, the official Symfony blog, 
Would you please raise your hand? Okay. Most of you, obviously. Okay. But what about the tweak block? Please raise your hand. Okay. A few people. Okay. Now take a look at this tweak snippet, at, at this modern tweak snippet. Do you recognize these filters, these, facts, these functions? Mean, max, source, round. Okay, they were introduced a few days ago in the latest Twig version. But you can only know this if you visit the Twig blog. So we think that every Symfony developer uses Twig and he should be updated about these new features of, of Twig. So soon we're going to merge all the Symfony ecosystem blocks all the different ecosystem blocks in the main symphony.com blog. So you are going to find not only posts about the Symfony framework, but about Twig, Silex, Swim Mailer, and everything of the ecosystem, okay? Number four, another thing that we want to do is to promote the local Symfony communities around the world. Right now, there are a lot of Symfony communities, and we have three huge communities in France, Spain, and Germany. But we want to do a lot more. We want to help you grow bigger. Okay, because we think if we have uh, active co communities and big communities, we can do great things. Like for example, the French community, which these days are publishing this advent calendar with great articles and they do a, a lot of meetups and all that. Okay, or the Spanish community with this huge symphony conference. Okay, or the German community with a lot of meetups around the country and, and of course many other symphony communities around the world, but we want to do more, okay? And the first step is going to provide you much more information on symphony.com blog uh, website, much more information on, and more, much more updated information about the communities, okay? About the, the dates of the events and meetups and blogs and local resources and relevant community members and all of that. Again, we need your help. We need your ideas, your comments to do great symphony community pages for your country, okay? And the last one. This is not really an, an idea, but a sneak peek into something that we'll show you in the coming months, okay? Thanks to you, thanks to this incredible community, Symfony has already more than 2,000 blogs, okay? The problem is that sometimes it's not that easy to select <laughs> the relevant bundle that you need, okay? And we think that we can improve the situation. Okay, so we're not going so today, but we have some ideas and one big surprise, right? but not today. So again, <laughs> you have ideas, comments, whatever, about bundles, about improving the situation with the bundles, please talk to us and please, please share your ideas to, to improve Symfony. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ravio. Um, so he's been working full time on those ideas and of how we can improve um, uh, the Symfony community, how it works, and, and what we can do to help you to actually get the most out of Symfony. Of course, a Symfony keynote would not be a Symfony keynote without talking about some code, right? Yeah, do you want to see some code? You won't. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the thing is, Symfony is quite stable now. Right? We have great components. We're going to add some more probably in the next few releases. But now we need to really um, concentrate all our efforts to stabilize, uh, to write more documentation, to add small features here and there. But we're not talking about redesigning the framework in the next couple of years. Right? So we won't have any big changes in Symfony in the next few years. Um, but of course, we can optimize things. Um, when I'm talking about optimizing, I'm talking about bugs, I'm talking about edge cases that we don't really um, uh, take into account nowadays, uh, better errors, uh, all the tooling that we have, um, and some more. And today I want to focus on one specific topic, which is performance. Um, some time ago, um, I started an experiment with Twig where I ask, um, um, I don't remember his name, Derek, thank you. Uh, so Derek uh, worked on a, a C extension for Twig, uh, and the goal was not to really um, re re 
it's, it was not about um, 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 converting Twig, the PHP version, to a C version, because that would be a lot of work, really, and it would not make any sense. So we decided to actually have a look at the performance of Twig, and there is one feature in Twig that is quite slow. This is a dot operator. That's because whenever you say foo.bar, it can mean a lot of different things. It can be the bar property on the foo object, can be the bar method on the foo object, or the, or the get bar method, or the is bar method, or it can be the bar item from the foo array. So it takes a lot of time to actually figure out what you actually mean when you say foo.bar. And we can only do so at runtime because foo can be anything really at runtime. So. Um, so we decided to uh, convert this part of the code, which was the slowest part of the tweak, to uh, a C extension. And depending on your code, you can get anywhere from 20 to 30 percent improvement uh, with uh, this C extension. So it worked pretty well, and since then we actually maintained the extension. Uh, so whenever we uh, change uh, something in the PHP implementation, fixing a bug or adding a new feature, we uh, synchronize the C version. So it works pretty well. So um, with this experiment, this nice experiment that works pretty well, and how many of you are actually using the C extension for Twig? Not that many. Um, but you must know that it, it works really well, and there are a lot of very big websites actually using the Twig extension. Um, so... I wanted to get to the next level, actually, um, and, and, and today I'm going to talk about Pimple. Um, I'm going to talk about Pimple because this is quite interesting, the story behind the, 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 the library, not the name, actually. Um, and uh, also because when I, when, um, I started to work on, on Pimple, it was not because I wanted to actually implement yet another dependency injection container. Actually, it was actu one of the first one in PHP, because at that time, I had um, a popular um, um, talk about uh, dependency injection. And at that time, it was around uh, um, the release of PHP 5.3 with uh, new support for anonymous functions. So I created Twig to actually, um, actually as an example on how you can uh, build a, a dependency injection container and to tell people that you know it's not a big name, it's not nothing really fancy, and creating a dependency injection container is actually really easy. So the code was not optimized for performance, it was optimized for learning what a dependency injection container is actually and how it works behind the scene. Right? And, and then I forgot about that, so I used Pimple into Silex, it works well. And, and, and uh, a few months ago, I, I, um, I thought about, about that again, and, and, and I, I thought about the, the, the fact that it was not really um, created for um, actually being useful. Uh, but now that we are actually using extensively in Silex, and because I'm using Silex a lot, I wanted to see if uh, improving the performance of uh, um, Pimple was actually possible. So... Um, and uh, yeah, and also um, along the years, I realized that the code is not really optimized as far as the user is concerned, the developer using Pimple. Most of the time, when you create a service, this is a shared one, a global one, right? And with Pimple, when you want to define a global uh, service, this is what you need to write. You need to wrap your anonymous function with uh, a share uh, call which is really annoying right? when you need to uh, define tens of services, you need to remember to actually call this share method. And if you don't, then you have a factory. You have a factory, which means that every time you want to get this service, you're going to have a new instance of the service. So optimizing this in Pimple 2 was really easy. We just switched uh, the notation, which means that now in Pimple version 2, by default, you get a shared service which is almost always what you want. And if you really want a factory, then you need to wrap your anonymous function with the factory call. Much better. But realizing that we are almost always talking about shared services, um, I wanted to understand if I was able to optimize the most common usage. So 
um, optimizing um, the get um, uh, function uh, to get a short service. So whenever you want to get a short service, I want to optimize this call. So I rewrote uh, the code uh, with performance in mind, which means that if you have a look at the code, it's not readable anymore. You can't understand what's going on, actually. Me neither, actually. Um, but it's really fast. It's much faster than Pimple version 1. So as you can see on the screen, I've optimized the get should method, which is uh, more than five times faster than the old version. Um, and uh, the, 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 the setter is actually three times faster than the, the same method in, in Pimple version 1. Um, but of course, the factory is now uh, much slower. That's fine. That's fine because you are not using um, uh, the factory um, that much. So that was the first step. Trying to think about how you can optimize the PHP code to make it faster. And it should be the first thing that you need to think about before trying to optimize things with C code or, or whatever. Uh, the first step is to actually see if you can improve stuff in PHP. And most of the time you can. Then, um, how many of you are aware of HHVM, the Facebook uh, thing? Okay, quite a few. So HHVM is a nice initiative um, uh, started by Facebook uh, a couple of years ago. I mean, the new version, actually. Um, and it's a tool. Um, this is a new implementation of the PHP language, um, written from scratch, which means that it's not entirely compatible with PHP that you get from php.net, but they are working really fast, which means that um, uh, they improve performance um, a lot on an everyday basis. So you can get some free performance improvement for free. Uh, and this is the numbers. Um, so as you can see, so the numbers are from PHP, uh, the PHP version of Pimple 2. And if you run it on, on HHVM, you can see that you can get some nice improvements. Okay, and then we decided to to write the the, the <laughs> you don't want coffee anyway. They don't care. I have um, twenty slides. Perfect. <laughs> I have six minutes left. That's fine. So at some point we decided to improve. I'm going to faster. Um, uh, we decided to rewrote Pimple as a C extension. That's, that's quite easy. Not really. Um, that's easier than, you know, porting the, uh, uh, converting the, 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 the dependency injection container component from Symfony for sure, because we are talking about uh, 200 lines of code or, or something. And doing so, we see also some nice improvements. So this is a comparison between Pimple 2 uh, in PHP and the C version. And you can see that the improvements are quite interesting. Uh, for the get shot method, we get an additional eight um, factor uh, of performance. And if we compare HHVM versus the C extension, the C extension is actually faster. But you can get those numbers. OK, and this one is really interesting. This is the, 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 the comparison between Pimple 1 and the C extension for Pimple version 2. So we are talking about 43 times faster, which is a lot, really. Um, but, you know, uh, the C extension is faster than HHVM for uh, a very specific reason. It's not a direct translation of the PHP code to C. If you just translate the PHP code to C code, you're not going to be much faster than a PHP version. You can get some improvement, but not that much. You can't get uh, numbers like five times faster or six times faster, I don't remember number. So it's something totally different. So you need to understand how PHP works internally. You need to understand how you can optimize things. Um, and, and to work on these topics, and, and we've been working on that for the last couple of months, I, I think, and we are going to uh, work a lot more on uh, things like that, um, I decided to um, actually uh, hire someone who is uh, known from the PHP uh, community, and Julian is going to work and is working on doing those kind of stuff. Is the one who actually wrote the C extension for Pimple. He's the reason manager of PHP 5.5 and 5.6. He wrote a book on PHP for performance, which is nice, really. And he has, um, I have a challenge for you. 
you have actually two minutes or three minutes to uh, talk about the C extension and how we can actually improve the performance uh, with C code. Thank you. Yes, uh, something like 10 seconds. Uh, yeah, but uh, you already told uh, the main line. Okay, so uh, the main line is uh, if you want to work on performance uh, on C code, uh, you just don't ha you just don't translate uh, PHP code to to C like that. You have to you have to think about uh, lots of things. Uh, don't try to to turn the world uh, into C because C. If you know this, uh, you know that it's very very hard to maintain. That's the main problem. That's uh, hard to maintain through different PHP versions as well. 5.3, 5.4, 5.5 five, five are very different internally. We're talking about a million of C lines of code, okay, for PHP, talking about this with the extensions. So um, when you want to optimize, uh, you have lots of way to do this because uh, the Zen engineer uh, who designed the, the Zen engine 10 years ago, something like that, Zen engine 2 for PHP 5, thought uh, about lots of uh, manner of uh, extending it. And it's like I I in symphony, if you think about, uh, about this, uh, it's, uh, wh when you, whenever you, you talk about an object, whatever you can do on an object with PHP has not been hard coded in the engine. You can actually replace anything you can do, like adding a reference, deleting a reference, cloning an object, reading a property, and accessing an object with brackets, okay? You call by default uh, offset set, offset get, and things like that, which is a method call, and a method call in PHP is heavy, it's uh, a CPU uh, intensive, and when you write extensions, for example, from Pimple 2, what I did is just uh, changing the object handlers uh, of uh, the class for, for, for Pimple 2, and then I said, if I want to write to the array uh, with the brackets, if I want to read from, then I short circuit all the engine, which does by default call for offset set, prepare your arguments, copy memory from memory regions to elsewhere. Uh, anyway, and then uh, I, I short circuit all this, and that's why we have uh, so, so many improvements. So the main idea is that now we are uh, trying to think about improving s very stable uh, components of symphony 2 uh, and in the future we'll have uh, i think tons of things to say about this should they be twig or dependent injection or even dispatchers or anything like this uh, we will have cool news uh, to announce in the next month uh, about such uh, such ideas I Thank think you. that's all. Uh, that's all for me. So, he's crazy, really. <laughs> Thank you, Julien. Um, so we are still experiment experimenting a lot of different things. Um, as he said, uh, we have more ideas. We are going to share them with you um, pretty soon now. Uh, but I think that's worse um, uh, in the Symphony world. Um, I'm going to be very fast. We are adding a lot of people. Done, and um, that's all. Um, if you want to, if you want me, um, um, I, I've actually um, some code topics to talk about, but I don't have time anymore. So I'm going to actually do two lightning talks um, tonight talking about some improvements I want to do in uh, Symphony 2.5. And if you want to talk about something. Uh, for the lighting talks, I think you can still uh, send an email to Anne Sophie, Anne -Sophie with a D at the end at sensilabs.com, or just go see uh, her and, and ask if the, there is some more room, but I think there are. Thank you.